Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part three of my code refactoring tutorial. Today, I'm going to talk about using variables to write understandable code. And this is still on the basic end of code refactoring, but there's a lot of points inside of here that are going to help you make your code much more understandable and more streamlined. So let's get into it. Okay, so what I did here was I created two classes, and one of them is called product, and the other one is called store. I listened to you guys, and you told me to stop talking about football because you don't know what I'm talking about because you don't live in the United States. So no more football talk. I'm going to stick to more understandable things. So here I got a class with product, and it has a name, and it has a price, and it has a shipping cost, and it has a quantity. And here are just my getters for all those different things. And then I have my product constructor right here. And then we get down into the part of the code that we're going to want to make some changes to to make it a little bit more understandable. Now this isn't that complicated. Basically what I'm saying here is if they buy more than 50 products or they buy more than $500 worth of products, then I'm going to give them a discount of a certain level. And then if they buy more than 25, I'm going to give them another discount. And if they buy more than 10, I'm going to give them another discount. But let's see if we can make this a little bit more understandable by using what is known as an experiment explaining variable. And just to see what this guy does before we start making any changes, I'm going to jump over into store and you can also see there's all kinds of other complicated stuff here we're going to fix. And I'm going to run this guy. And it's pretty simple. All that it's doing is it's going to print out on the screen the total cost for 52 pizzas, which is $521, the cost per product, savings per product based off of quantity, and that's all it's going to do. And it's just going to change. And I have three different quantities of pizzas, and it's going to print out all kinds of information on savings. So again, remember, I want the same output. I just want neater code. So jump back over into product, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this off as bad code. So there that goes. Now that's away. Now what are some things I can do here? Well, like I mentioned before, I'm going to use what are called explaining variables. And all they are used for is whenever you have expressions that are really complicated, instead what you're going to do is make those expressions make a lot more sense by saving these conditionals or different expressions or what have you into a variable that you can then refer to. Now I'm going to mark this as final and boolean and I'm I'm going to define one that is going to be over 50 products. See, that's very understandable. And then simply what I'm going to do here is copy this guy right here, this conditional, and paste it inside of there. And now I'm going to use that conditional and now a much easier to understand name over 50 products. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing for a couple other conditionals. And if you're wondering why final is used, it's basically going to be used to make sure that the temporary variables that I create here only have one value per iteration because it's considered bad practice to assign different values to temporary variables, which is what these are. That can lead to a lot of confusion, which I'm going to get into here in a second. So then let's create this guy, and he's going to be over 25 products. And I'm just going to simply come in here and copy this guy as well and paste this in here. And then this guy's going to be over 10 products. And I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to copy this out of here. And this is basically just nonsense code, but I'm just trying to make a point on how to use temporary variables to make things more understandable. Now, since I went and moved those conditionals up inside of here and saved them to these temporary variables, I'm now going to be able to replace them. So just come in here and bounce right there. And now you can see it makes a lot more sense. If over 50 products, they get a quantity discount of this amount. If over 25 products, they get a quantity discount of this amount. And then finally, if over 10 products, they get a quantity discount of this amount. So I went and chopped it down. It doesn't look like much, but it made this much more understandable. And also you can see if I take out those comments and I jump over into store and execute it, I'm still going to get the exact same answer that I got before, which is great. That's the goal. Make the code more understandable, but of course you still want the code to work in exactly the same way. And all the code's available in a link underneath the video if you want to take a look at it. Now I'm going to jump over into store.java and let's look at a whole bunch of other different things. So here the this is just a store and it's going to have a bunch of different products saved into it, a way to save those products. And then we get down to here where we're calculating the cost of the products. 
and we're just doing that by iterating through the array list and then printing out that information. As you can see, it is getting very, very, very long and complicated. So we want to shorten that up, make it a lot more understandable. Now, of course, you're also going to be able to use explaining variables for really complicated calculations. Now, very often, like in the last tutorial where I mentioned that it's much better, if possible, to extract this code and throw it into a method, sometimes that is not an option. And in those situations, and explaining variable can really make your code make a lot more sense. So I'm just going to mark this as bad code again. I'm going to comment this out and then we're going to think about how we can create some temporary variables that are going to save this information and make it much more understandable. Now very often making these calls to methods can get kind of busy and a little bit hard to understand. So why not throw that information into a variable? So we could say something like number of products, which makes a lot more sense, and then come down here and grab this guy and throw it inside of there. We could also do the same thing for the product names, product name, and then come down here, product get name, throw down that method call. And also we're gonna do the same thing with the cost, except in this situation, I'm just gonna call it cost and bounce over here, call that method and save it inside of there with a variable. Then I'm gonna start doing this with a bunch of other different things. So let's say we wanted to get the cost with discount cost per product, and this guy here is going to have that value. So we're gonna pop that inside of there. And then let's also say that we want to get the cost without a discount. And this guy is gonna be product get price plus product get shipping cost. And now that I have all those broken into variables, I can make this code a lot shorter and more understandable. So whenever I come in here for total cost for product get quantity, I can just put in number of products, paste that in there, product get name, I can just go in here and instead put in product name, shortens it up, and then cost, instead of putting product get total cost, I can come down here and paste that in there. Now that shortened it up a little bit, but it made it a lot easier to read, see? Instead of all those method calls, it now says total cost for number of products, product name is cost. See, you can read that just like it's a sentence, much better. Then we can say cost per product, so I wanna say this is the cost per product with the discount. I could just bounce up here and go cost with discount and paste that in there because previously what was listed there didn't in no way tell me that I was going to be getting the cost with discount. By reading this, product get total cost divided by product get quantity, this does not tell me that a discount is being used even though I know it is being used. This new variable name tells me this is the cost with the discount. So, and on top of that, cost per product and cost with discount. This is telling me it reads like a sentence, and on top of that, it's telling me exactly what cost I'm going to be printing out. So it's good in a multiple different ways. Then we get down to savings per product, and we have this terribly, terribly long thing that is kind of convoluted and hard to read. Well, now it's gonna be much easier to use because I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna go cost with discount because remember, we wanna figure out savings per product. So how are we gonna figure that out? Well, we need cost without discount, which is right there. So we're gonna come in here. Let's just delete this whole entire thing right up to this point. Savings per product is gonna be equal to to cost without discount minus cost with discount. See, makes a heck of a lot more sense. And we pasted that in there. And not only did we make it shorter, which is always good, but also we made it much more understandable being savings per product is equal to cost without discount minus cost with discount. Of course, it's just common sense. And that is the goal of writing code is to make it make more sense. And using these explaining variables like we have up here with very descriptive names is one way to do that. Another example of bad code, and here I'm just going to bounce out here at the bottom and just type some stuff in, is based off of why it's bad to assign many different values to a temporary value. So I'm going to actually just show it to you. So let's say we have some code here and we just have temp inside here, and I see this stuff all the time. So we have total cost divided by number of products, for example. So that's fine. Okay, so we have this temporary value here, and we know that it is total cost divided by number of products. So what is this going to basically be telling us? It's telling us that temp is going to be equal to individual product cost. Okay, so that's what it says. So let's continue on. Well, let's then say we go temp now is equal, just because we're being lazy, temp is equal to also the shipping. All right, so now what does temp meaning this guy right here, what's that equal to? Well, that's gonna be equal to the individual product cost plus shipping. 
All right, it's still kind of understandable, but really not. Well, then let's say we wanna figure out, well, what is going to be the cost after the discount? Yes, indeed, we can do this. And indeed, at this point in time, we do know that this value of temp at this point in time is going to be equal to individual product cost plus shipping minus discount. But the question is, will you be able to remember this, say, a year from now or six months from now or even two weeks from now? Chances are it's going to be confusing. And this is why we do not assign multiple different values to a temporary variable. We always want these names to be very descriptive. And really, does it take any more time? All we're going to have to do is instead come in here and go individual product cost. And then down here, we can just go individual product cost plus shipping. Here we could go product cost and shipping and if you wanted to abbreviate it change it down to that and then we could put discounted product cost longer variable name but definitely six months from now you're going to be able to read this and understand what's going on so that's one of the reasons why you do not want to assign multiple different values to temporary variables another thing you don't want to do is assign values to parameters that are passed over into methods so here's an example of that. So let's just go public double and let's say this is get total price and what's passed into it, let's say a quantity, a price, shipping cost, and a discount. Boy, this is long, but either way. Now let's say that we like the whole idea since get total price is what we're ultimately trying to get here and price is in here. Why not use that as a convenience to create our little algorithm? So in essence, we could go price is equal to price plus shipping cost and then say price is equal to price times quantity and then return price minus discount and it might look convenient but right again what you have to worry about is is this going to be understandable three to six months from now and of course it would be much better to go through the process that i showed before and provide all of these different variables or temporary variables with very descriptive names so this is just sort of the basic sort of things that we need to think about because when we start refractoring into patterns things are going to get much more complicated and we're going to start doing that very very soon so I just wanted to get a couple of these basic ideas into your head and in upcoming tutorials when we start refactoring into patterns, design patterns I mean, you'll be very happy that you don't make mistakes like this. Please leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.